Hi everyone, this is Kieran Oversappin for Filmstorm Studios and I'm bringing you the second part in our third person character series. Um, you'll notice this is where we left off, but I've done a couple of changes. I've just added some more animations in. So of course you can do this if you have um, more animations. All I've done is just added some more on the angles. So you'll notice if I move this around, there's just um, four more in each angle. So now she can actually move in diagonals. If you didn't have these anyway, um, it's still going to calculate going in, but having a proper animation in the angle will work better. Alrighty, but that's pretty much all I've done. So let's get started and today we're going to be creating a jump and start working on our weapon and also fix up a couple of glitches that um, I didn't cover in the last um, tutorial. So let's just fix up one little thing that I, I left out. Um, if you go to your player movement, I'll actually show you what the problem is. So say I, I start moving up here, up this ramp, you'll notice if I start pressing back, her gravity doesn't actually take into effect until you let go, and then she'll go back down. So there's um, one little um, thing that we have to just turn on in our FSM. So let's jump back into our player movement, and let's get rid of this. So I was just testing something. As you can see, I was, I was um, testing a rolling animation. So let's just get rid of that. Alrighty, so this is where we left off. Now all we need to do is look up controller, simple move, and that's all we need. And don't worry about move vector or speed, you can just set that to none and have it at world. And now you'll notice when we go into it, and we press back, she will stick to the ground. How good is that? And it's one tiny little fix. Alrighty, so now let's move on to our jump. Let's double check in our input settings if our jump is all correctly set up. So we have one button called jump and it's for space, so that will work lovely. So let's jump back to our character, our player movement. And we want to create a get button down for jump. So you can come up here and go get button down and then create that and pop that in here. And all we're doing is typing jump and let's set up a new event to jump. And let's switch this guy over. And let's create a new state. I'm gonna call this jumping. And this is only gonna trigger the animation. So let's create that. Finished, pop that back in here. And that's all good. So now we need to go to our animator and go back to our base layer. So we've got our blend tree in here. And go back here. And we want to create a new animation. So let's have a look for a jump animation. We want to kind of have a maybe jump and keep running. So let's have a look. Land. Yeah, so this is kind of what we want. So let's bring this one in. And let's just call it jump run. And create a transition, you can right mouse click and then you can see we're going to drag a transition to the jump run from our movement and also back. Now this is one really big thing that um, will save you heaps of headaches and worrying about why it isn't working. Um, so let's just create a new boolean to set up and we're going to call it is jumping. So we can send the command from our player when we hit space to say is jumping and that's going to trigger our transition. So let's click on the one going to the jump. And we're going to create a condition and our condition is going to be is jumping is true. So when this we say this character is jumping is true, it's going to let us transition to our jump. Alrighty, and let's turn off has exit time and we can leave everything like that. Now let's go to here and this is all right. So if you press play, you'll notice she'll just um, transition back to our movement and our movement will be whatever, but we can adjust um, when the player can take control of the jump. Uh, when we're doing some testing. So apart from that, everything looks good. Let's go back to our player, player movement, jumping, and we're gonna set an animator bool. This is this is that part that I was telling you before. We're gonna send the command to our Boolean, which is gonna trigger this transition. So we're gonna say the parameter is jumping. Make sure it's spelled exactly the same, even capitals. That will um, not work if, it, if um, you type it wrong. And let's copy this and paste this in here and get rid of this roll one that's from before. And 
that should be good and let's create <clears throat> sorry and let's create a weight and make this 0 0.05 that should be quick enough we can make that a bit longer if it's not triggering and let's give this a play and see what's going to happen so now you'll see that she's um, moving forward and the main reason is we didn't turn off that that plus so let's turn that off there we go so I think I might have actually dragged in the wrong animation because she kind of looks like she's um it's a landing rather than a, a jump so let's double check the animation that I dragged in let's go for another jump yeah we need an actual jump uh, let's have a look uh, jump yeah that that will be perfect so let's make sure it's let's drag in this one sorry I dragged in the wrong one so now if we press play and you'll notice she won't finish so now we need to to actually create some sort of height that she'll go up for the jump so let's go back to our player movement and for our jumping let's create a translate and we're going to translate her up maybe six and see how much that's going to do. Is that going to be a bit too crazy? No, it might be a bit, wasn't enough. So let's, let's make her weight 0 0.2. And let's see if that's going to be enough. There you go. So now you saw she actually had a bit of a jump there. So all we need to do now is actually start a little raycast um, down uh, when she jumps. So if you'll notice, if I go to her player model. When the player model actually leaves the ground, this capsule. Let me turn down the. Let me turn down this. There we go. So now you see this this capsule. When we press jump, we want a little raycast to shoot down and touch the ground. So then when our character uh, makes contact, um, we can send the actual animation to stop her jumping. So let's do that quickly. So while she's in the air, let's create a Boolean to say, oh, to say is jumping. And we're gonna set this Boolean, set bool value. You know, set this to positive, copy and paste this guy into movement. And then in our events, we're going to say to, to land, actually. And we're going to make this a global transition. This is the first time we created this, just a little thing saying where it's going to be saved. And now right mouse click global transition and to land. So now from any other FSM, we can send the global event back to here. So in this case, when our raycast is finished, um, we're going to say send it to here so she lands. So that is perfect. And what we're going to do now, well, actually, we might want to actually set a state for to land and then delete and then have this finish. So plug that into here. So that way we can actually have a, a separate animatable trigger for her landing. So let's just say to land. Perfect. Alrighty, so now let's create another FSM. I'm going to say this, I'm going to call this guy um, jumping. And we're going to say, we're going to create a bool and we, this, this, this bool value is going to be called is jumping. Inspector. Now let's say get FSM bool. We're going to be getting our play of movements, our jumping. We're going to store that in jumping. And then we're going to do a bull test. And if bull is jump, if our jumping is true, we're going to send an event to say start raycast. So let's say if it's true, start raycast. And we're going to say every frame. Let's pop this down here. Let's create another one. Pop this in here and say finished. And all done. Let's copy these two. 
and place these in here. And then if it's false, we'll say finish. Perfect. Alrighty, we're almost there. Now we need to say um, raycasting. So this is when our thing's gonna be raycasting and then call this one wait for jump. Perfect, let's make this guy red. So we know that he's doing something important. We're gonna call a raycast event. Now, because our character is gonna be, we're gonna to wanna to see when she's touching the ground, we wanna create a direction of minus y. So it's gonna shoot down a distance of maybe 0 0.5. We might have to adjust this depending on how soon she activates. Um, if she hits, we're going to say, uh, let's say to send land. Put that in here. So this, um, so if that way, if she detects the land, then we're going to send um, the event to trigger the animation to let it land. And then let's create another transition. Say finished. Perfect. Okay. And then we're going to say send land, and we're going to say send event to self. Nope. To game object our owner, player movement to land, and that's all done. And then when that, once that's done, it's gonna finish. Perfect, all right. And then we're gonna wanna set, set, reset the event, the hit event to send land. Um, let's debug it so that way we can see the little line shooting down. And apart from that, everything looks good. Alrighty. Now let's jump to animator. Now we want to now we want to go to jump or maybe even land. What's our land? So let's go to land to run. So this is the one we were using before. Let's drag this guy in. So we're gonna say land and back. And let's delete. Well, we'll keep that transition actually, and we'll make this transition keep going and going and this land um, has an exit time so that's perfect we can leave everything like that and then let's do the final touches so let's go back to our player movement and go to land and we're going to say crossfade animated crossfade and our state that we're going to crossfade to when we land is our landing animation and our transition duration is 0 0.02, nice and short. Alrighty, now let's double check that we have everything all turned on. Set animator bool, set bool value. So our bool value, we don't want it to be jumping, so let's turn that off. Alrighty, now let's see if this is gonna work. We might have to make some adjustments, but hopefully it should be okay. So let's jump up here, let's jump. All right, so the um, we might have to put a weight down because the raycast is instantly turning off before she can get off the ground. So let's go back to our jumping. Let's pop down here and then just create a quick weight event. And I reckon maybe even 0 0.2 seconds, 0. Point, maybe 0 0.4. Let's pop the 0 0.4 down, pop a finish and that should be good. All right, let's give this a play. All righty. So I think we, I think it's actually going too quick. And that's because this, um, this base one is actually finishing. So if you notice this jump, once we go back, and um, once we press space to jump, it's actually going back and then turning off the is jumping. So that is a little problem that we have to fix. So what we could do is instead of using a bull to trigger it, let's actually just say get button down, jump, and then let's link that to, to send um, start raycast. And let's just turn off our bull test and turn off this bull test just to um let's just see if this is going to work 
Otherwise, let's create a wait for two seconds and then go back to uh, say finished. All right, so hopefully this should fix our problem. Let's turn off all the bulls. So instead of using a bull, we're going to use a jump down. So let's test this out. There we go. Look at that. So now you can actually see the little yellow line that appears when we jump. So let me jump back up here. So pay attention to under the under the capsule, this capsule here. So I'll jump and the little yellow line briefly appears. And then it triggers our animation and then cross fades that back into our character. And then we have a really good thing. So that way, no matter how high your object is, she'll always transition back to the, um, the jump. So that's pretty much been this jump tutorial. Uh, let's quickly get started on our weapon. So let's jump out of here and make sure you save your scene so you don't crash and lose everything. Alrighty, let's create a quick cube. Let's jump to our scene view. And what we're going to do is create some sort of a simple sword. Alright, so let's drag this guy in, and drag that guy in, and duplicate him. And then scale him and scale this guy up. And of course, you would normally use a model for this, but I'm just saving some time. Now, let's make it a little bit. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. All right, oh, let's drag this guy out a little bit. Lovely, now we've got our two cubes. Oh, this cube and this cube. All right, so now you can see we've got our little sword that we can move around. Let's click on her and drag into her, uh, whoops, our maybe, let's have a look when we press play. So this, her right arm's the primary one. So let's go to and set it up into her right hand. So right shoulder, right arm, right forearm and right hand. Let's drag this guy in. I'm gonna call this guy sword. Can minimize that, drag it into his hand and put zero, zero, zero to center it, press F. And let's just pop this guy in here. And let's even scale it down a tiny bit and bring this guy into there. All right, let's press play. Now you'll see it's parented. Perfect. It's looking good. So now you can see that she's, um, she's correctly using the sword. So now all we need to do is start linking up more animations like we have been for our jump and our different attacks. And I'll probably do that next lesson considering it's now 19 minutes in. So I'll keep this one relatively short so we don't drift off into the 30 minutes. So this has been a relatively long tutorial on how to create a really good jump system that's um, quite adaptive and allows you to sync in a lot of different animations and um, keep your character looking nice and fresh. Um, this has been Kieran Oversapien for Filmstorm Studios. If you have any questions, just as always, send them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, expect the other tutorial late this afternoon and I will see you guys next time.